Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nicole and I'm a first year medical student studying at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I also recently graduated from IB last year, and in today's video, I'll be sharing my tips and advice on how to write an exemplar IA in order to get a high score on your IB exams. Because your IAs are one of the biggest components that you can actually control, ensuring that you can get a high score overall in IB. Throughout this video, you might see me looking down a lot because I'm actually referring to notes written on my computer, um, so just bear with me. Tip number one, coming up with a topic. Coming up with a good research question is just as important, if not more important, than writing the actual IA. So what exactly does good mean? The principles that I use um, is twofold. Number one, either make it a unique twist to something that's common or you can actually use a common approach to a unique topic. For your science IAs, so usually that would be physics, bio, and chem, don't stress too much about having a completely novel and unique research question because most of the things have already been done. As you're brainstorming IA topics, make a note on your phone so that it's easily accessible for times when something just random could pop up. Especially when you're learning new topics in class, see if you could turn anything that you're interested in in that topic into an IA topic and start looking early. Another important aspect of getting a good research question is actually timing. Coming up with a IA topic early means that you'll have more time to work on it and change it and modify it to your liking. Think about this as the equivalent of having an extension. Instead of having the deadline pushed back, just start earlier. This is why starting early should just be a no-brainer. As I mentioned before, start thinking about a topic early. When you learn new topics, think about how what you're learning could be applied to the real world and how this could be possibly turned into an IA research question. In order to get inspiration for a good IA topic, also browse exemplar IAs from either your seniors online or ask your teacher for examples. Timing and having a really good research question is also intricately related. If you have a good question that you know a lot about, it is possible to write your IA the night before. Of course, I'm not actually recommending this, but just keep this in your mind as you're looking for a question because you want something that's easy for you to write about. Speaking of time, the best time to edit your IA is not right after you write it. I would say the best time to edit would be the day after you write your rough draft because then you're looking back at your IA with a fresh mind but you still remember the stuff that you wrote. If you wait too long, then you won't be as familiar with your topic and you'll have to reread your IA a few times to freshen up. And if you do it right after you write your rough draft, it's just really taxing and draining for yourself. So I would recommend that the day after your IA is due when you turn in, because I'm assuming that everyone procrastinates, okay? So say you write your rough draft and you finish it the night before, turn it in. The day that you turn in, when you get home, start editing. Just do one like one go through and edit out any possible grammar mistakes, add in any ideas that you didn't have time to add in. And after that first time editing, you can give yourself a break and look back at it in a week. Another aspect of having a good research question is originality. And this is actually linked to the timing. So in some cases, having a topic earlier than others also means that others won't be able to do it. And this was an issue that came up a lot for me in English and also in my science IAs. Because for my English class, what we did is that everyone wrote down their World Lit essay or their IOP um, topic on the board after it was approved by the teacher. And the earlier you had the question, the earlier you could start. And it also meant that you laid claims to that theme or that idea and no one else could do the same. So the best topics usually are picked first, which is why it's important to start brainstorming early so you can be ready to get your topic on that whiteboard before anyone else gets the chance to steal your topic. This was less applicable for history because history was so broad, but it was definitely a thing 
that I struggled a bit with for my world lit essay because and and for my IOP because I didn't really know um, what to talk about and because I waited so long a lot of things I did eventually want to talk about were already taken so I know for you guys that are watching this video, the world lit and IOP and IOC I think are no longer a thing, but you guys still have individual oral presentations and this still applies for you guys. Tip number two, using exemplar IAs. So when you read an exemplar IA, don't just passively read it. You should also be jotting down notes about their organization, how they transition from one idea to another, the different sections that sh should be included in the IA, maybe specific terms or phrases that you liked, how they used, and you would want to incorporate into your own IA. Also make note of when they should be reflecting on their topic and how they link their topic to a real world application. These are all things that you should be keeping in mind when you look for a good IA topic because you should be able to also do these things in your own IA. Additionally, browsing previous exemplar IAs gives you an idea of how broad your topic can be. It really shows you how the possibilities are basically endless as long as you know where to look. I strongly recommend that you look at exemplar IAs before you start brainstorming and also before you write your IA because it gives you an idea of what your finished product should look like. Also examine the wording of the exemplar IAs. Which starter phrases for a sentence could prompt you to have a reflective part of your IA? For instance, you could write down the phrase, through this investigation, I discovered that dot dot dot. Just make a note or write down these things so that you won't forget it because your brain is not good with storing information. It's good with coming up with ideas, but it's not good with storing information. Overall, you can use an exemplar IA as a good reference and map out or break down the exemplar IA so that you know how you can start. This makes the process a lot less intimidating because as you break it down, you'll realize that it's actually not that bad. Tip number three, don't feel restricted with starting from the beginning. It's definitely okay to jump around when you're writing. You don't have to really start from the very beginning. In fact, when I start writing, I try to not start writing from the introduction because I am actually not that sure about where I would eventually draw conclusions. As I write, I'm also discovering what I'm writing. So I try to not write my intro first and that also makes it a lot more easier for me to get started because writing an intro is scary for me. You can definitely start writing for the from the first body paragraph and then just save writing the intro and the conclusion for the very end. This will make your life a lot easier. This was especially the case when I was writing my history IA because as I was writing, I still wasn't very clear about the direction of my topic so I just wrote as I read other references and after I got all my body paragraphs down then I would finally write my intro and using the intro and what I have written I made final conclusions at the very end. I would lay out the points I would want to write about and just write the analysis or anything that just came up to my mind and remember this is your rough draft so it's definitely not going to be perfect and it's okay to just brain dump onto your word document and from there organize your thoughts. Also, don't commit yourself to one section. You can simultaneously write multiple sections or write about multiple pieces of evidence if you're getting like a writer's block or if you hit a roadblock. So say you have like five, six, seven pieces of evidence. Write down all the evidences down, like write down all your pieces of evidence and from there you can jump around and write analysis when it comes to you. Just be more free flowing and flexible when writing your IA instead of restricting yourself to go from intro, then middle, then final conclusion. Another tip is writing analysis and then your evidence. Although this is not the normal way of writing or how we're taught in school, try writing the analysis first before looking for evidence that will support your analysis. By doing this, you're letting your own ideas shape the direction of the writing and the essay and not the book's ideas. And this also prevents you from plagiarism because when I wrote my English EE, what I actually did is I just wrote down a whole bunch of analysis and afterwards I looked through um, like literary analysis from actual critics 
and I used quotes from there to support my analysis and just to make sure that everything flowed well. When you write your analysis first, it means that you create a more unique exploration of a topic. However, this needs to be done carefully in order to make sure that everything flows well and also just makes sense. This usually works better when you're already familiar enough with your topic so that you make sure that your analysis is factual and legit. So this was my case for history too. I had a good idea of what analysis I would want to write. So what I would do is I would write analysis to support my claim. And afterwards, I would look through my reference books and look for evidence that support my analysis, which support my claim. So this overall makes sure that everything stays on topic and flows well. And I also had a good enough background knowledge to know that the analysis that I was writing was correct and factual. Usually my analysis was further ex expanding the claim and also adding some nuance. And then the evidence I would look for was just continuous with everything I was already talking about. When I was writing, it was much easier for me to write my claim and then write the analysis instead of writing my claim, stopping to find evidence and then writing analysis. Going from claim to analysis just made everything flow much better and I was already in that state where I could just keep writing. So this is something that you could try if you're struggling to write. This process is much easier than breaking off to find evidence and then trying to write analysis that wraps around the evidence instead of wrapping around your claim. Finding good evidence is also really hard and having the claim and analysis already, already written means that you have a clear idea of what kind of evidence you need in order to support your ideas. In order to remind yourself to actually include evidence in your essays, what I would do is write the word source and have it bolded. So I would know to go back and look for a piece of evidence that supports my overall paragraph. After you add your evidence, you can always also go back and tweak your analysis to make sure that it fits the evidence that you found. After you're done, just make sure to proofread your work and to make sure that you're not missing pieces of evidence. Also, just check that your overall essay has a nice flow to it. Tip number five, decide if you want your IA to be a marathon or a sprint. So I'm not gonna say that one is better than the other because I wrote some IAs as a marathon and others like a sprint. What I mean by marathon is really breaking it down and staggering out in weeks and writing it bits and pieces here and there. A good chunk of my IAs were written in one or two big breaths like two days before the rough IA was due and it still worked for me and I still got a seven on my IAs. So either or it can work, it just really depends on how you approach it. Regardless of whether you choose to trade it as a marathon or a sprint, make sure that you have a clear idea of what components make up the IA. So you've got the intro, you've got maybe sections A through C for history, or something like that. And then you also have to cite your sources, you also have to look for sources. There's just a lot of stuff that you need to make sure that you know. If you have the discipline, I strongly recommend that you break up your IA into small manageable parts and just do it bits by bits. You could also just say, okay, I'll write 150 or 200 words um, every day, starting two weeks before the, the rough draft is due. And just doing bits and pieces every day is very manageable. It also means that you won't be dealing with the stress the day before because you still have half of your IA to write. Do some planning beforehand and your life will be a lot easier. That being said, I did treat some of my IAs as a marathon. And do I regret not starting my IAs earlier and not treating it like a marathon? Yes, but because I still pulled through and I guess it worked for me because what I did is once I was in that flow state, I could really like chug out like 500, 600 words in one sitting and I'll just take a break and keep on writing and keep on writing and having the flow meant that it wasn't too hard for me to churn out my ideas.
So that's one benefit of working in big chunks, maybe like a few days before. Number one, you have that pressure and you will definitely be motivated. But another thing is that I felt like writing in huge chunks of time helped the flow of my essay because I, wouldn't, I wasn't taking like intermittent breaks as I was writing. I was writing the entire section in one sitting and everything just flowed because my concentration wasn't breaking. I do recommend, however, that if you plan on treating it like a sprint, schedule the sprint to be two days before the rough draft is due instead of the day before. And why I say this is because after you write your rough draft, you you will realize that you underestimated the amount of time it took. And even if you did estimate correctly and you get it done two days before it's due, having that one extra day means that you can go back and reread your IA and make some final edits because ultimately you want to submit the best work to your teacher in order to get the most feedback. In order to edit your IA after your rough draft is due and submit a final piece that you're very happy with and proud of. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my five pieces of advice or tips for writing your IA. I will be making future videos breaking down exactly how I wrote specific IAs, say my math and history IA because I am quite proud of them and I did get a 7 graded by the examiner, not my teacher, graded by IV examiners. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and I'll see you next time.